We are back with uh, my buddy Leo from Elicht, uh, and uh, he is going to show us a number of his interesting products that he works on. Yep. Leo, so good to see you again, pal. Hello. All right. Nice so, to meet you. So we start with uh, maybe the bread and butter of your products are wheels, yes? Yeah, yeah. What do you have in the way of wheels that you've been working on? I have two types of wheels, full plastic wheels and hybrid wheels. I, I started with full plastic wheels and they are not monkey proof for commercial use. Okay. So people told me that make uh, cargo bikes with it and then you see that it doesn't work for anybody. Therefore, I came up with another idea and make more hybrid wheels. So the elastic plastic side. Yeah, inside. let's see. Let's show, show us. And you have an, a kind of a spider form inside, who is flexible. And then I have an aluminium rim, and I put with two screws for each spoke. The you have this. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, yeah it's also black. That said, then you don't see the connection good but this is an aluminium rim and the plastic right. spider put together with screws so it is a lot more work but this is almost 100 percent monkey proof there are always people who can demolish everything but people who have experienced my full plastic wheel and took down this wheel they say it is more than five times better but that is because they have it only a year and they cannot confirm that it is, yeah, you, we don't know the future of those wheels. So it'll take a little more time yeah. to, to determine how long it will last. But so very interesting. And, the, and these wheels then are mostly for cargo bike uh, you yeah, see, yeah? Yeah, yeah, they, they are kind of heavy wheels. Right. For cargo bikes, not right. for velomobiles. Yeah, nobody's going to race yeah. a velomobile with this. No, uh, no but, nobody will. But cargo bikes, which are huge here yeah. in Europe yeah. and getting bigger in the States yeah. as yeah. well. So, yeah. all right, very good. What else should we talk about? Uh, we, we can talk about uh, the mudguard for this kind of wheels. All right, so Leo, here's the uh, mudguard you were talking about. Tell us about it. Um, this is a mudguard for a hollow wheel. And then you have the disc brake of the other side. So here's where you want to show. Yeah. Of the of the, the mud. And I also uh, have this in a, the small version. I cut down the ring off. That is more for velomobiles, velo cars. There you have something. It is closed. Eh, if you look to the elevator, and then the small version. And the hope is that then you enlarge the lifetime of the. The, the disc from the disc brake. All righty, so uh, here's another interesting uh, product, Leo. Uh, a hood for a velomobile? Yeah, a uniform hat for velomobiles. It, it takes away the sun and, and the, the rain, and it gives you some protection, and you can put it on a lot of types of velomobiles. It's, it's not high end, uh, it's just functional, and it works. What I always do is that you can look under the, the glass uh -huh. so that you never have fog, rain on it, always a good sight. Mm -hmm. And Because that, you have the opening. Yeah, there. then you have an opening. And if you want to sit um, out of the, the wind you get in your end, you can have an extra small part in front and that tips oh, over the to, wind. To bring the, yeah. the rain up and over. Yeah, yeah. All right, Leo, so we also have uh, some molded seats here yeah, that you have? Injection molded seats, always the, the same material, a nylon with a lot of glass fibers in it. This is my own seat. I have that for more than 10 years. This is good for a more laying position. If you go to a more seating position, then it's too short on the front side. Same. And what, a velomobile? What is this for? This is more, yeah, for, for velomobiles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is for the elevator. That is the standard seat of the elevator. Yeah, okay, yeah. And this is, uh, I am a, a dealer of the pot bike seat. That, that is longer at the front side. So if you're seating more straight up, then you have more yeah, comfort. Mm -hmm. So then I have two products way out of each other. Right. Yeah, and you should not lay here when then you get this in the underside of your, your legs. Yeah, let's turn this a little bit so they see that as well. All right, so something you have been doing for a long time are uh, these idler uh, rollers. So tell us about what you do with those. 
Yeah, the, those are normal idlers for failure mobiles where you need to get the chain under your seat or whatever you want to do with your chain in different sizes. Um, what I always do, what's, uh, what I do is, um, it's not, not I, but my suppliers, put the bearings in the machine right. and then inject it, the plastic, also plastic with glass fiber, around the bearings. Ah. So you have one part economical to make. Yeah, that's what I do. So, yeah, so in, uh, injection molding, and is a big part, but there's something else that I know you've been working on uh, that you told me about a minute ago that's really interesting that you haven't got into yet. Something about uh, roto molding, yes? Yes. What do you have in mind? What's coming up? Um, what I want to do is a roto molding velo car, because it is heavy, that's why I call it more a velo car and not a velo mobile. There's not a good definition for it, but I think I position it as a velo car, then people know it's not for racing. Mm -hmm. And I like to have the body from one piece, double-sided, roto molding, um, plastic is that. Um, mm -hmm. And the shape is something what I yeah, experience what is for me a good shape. That is the, the closest to the old Sunrider. Um, yeah, and because you choose for another type of producing it, you have to make a lot of other decisions. And I came with that idea, say a, a year ago, that was the start. I started, say, one and a half a year ago to produce together with Katanga and David the elevator. Mm -hmm. And that does go so well, but that is a kit. And you have to spend say 30 hours, or people have to do by it, have to spend 30 hours, need, say, say good um, yeah, technical skills. To mean, say, if you don't have technical skills, you won't manage it. it won't work, yeah. So, and I thought, we spent a lot of time and effort on the body. Can I make that body more efficient? And then I came up with the water molding. So, it's not to replace the, the, the aluminium kit, it is just something else and it is less labor intensive. Right. So if I succeed, eh? it's a process. Now my process is to get the, the drawings okay, together with them the drawer and I make small things I can show you if you oh, want. Yeah. So here are some of the design implements uh, that you yeah, have. Th this is design uh, and measurements studies for me. Here you see yeah, the things what I need to see if I am satisfied with the basic form and then I can communicate this shape with my drawer so that the, the, the outer shape will be okay and that I know that I fit in it, mm -hmm. and here you see, yeah, you see some wheels and a seat. That that's the seat somewhere between my seat and the pot bike seat. Yeah, right. it's straight up, fit, and, yeah. and it, the seat should be integrated in the body. Okay. So long people have the yeah, small people. Then you pull your uh, pedals to you, okay. and if you are very small or you don't fit in it, or you put an extra seat before the seat who is for free. The back of the shape is the seat, oh, okay. but you can always put something in front, something in front yeah. to, to, for short people, and yeah. then you have extra luggage. But, but here you see something, it is... Hold that up and turn it slowly so folks can see. So, yeah. so, so this is from a kind of a weak material, that's roto molding, it's weak material. But if you have the design hopefully good enough, then you can have a stiff body who is very good for cycling, especially with a pedal generator in front. Oh, yes. So this is designed as a four-wheeler and with a pedal generator. When by a pedal generator, you don't have the chain tensions and you put your chain somewhere, that's always difficult and whatever sure. it is. Yeah, let's let's bring the folks up to date. We talked last year a little bit about uh, pedal, pedal generators. So this is a system where you pedal 
but there's no chain connected to the wheels. The energy goes directly to a battery. It's motorized. And with software, they, uh, they simulate the feel of having a chain and such. So it, it's, a, it's an uh, up and coming technology that uh, is really interesting. So that's what you would implement yeah, here. Yeah. And the roto, uh, the roto molding process, um, there's a rotovelo that they do in uh, Australia. Uh, this is it, and it, this is a garbage can kind of plastic that's very durable. But instead of having an aluminum frame, like you say, this will have structure to it. Yes, yeah. with the with the plastic. That's yeah. the idea. Yeah, yeah. If the plastic is in in a shape and double wall wallet, then you can have more strength out of it. And you, of course, you need some metal flanges to connect the, the, the studs for the front wheel. Yeah. But, but in general, I think this is good enough. I make here over the knees also a structural part from the plastic yeah. that you can have here a stable point for the hinge yeah, for, for a big uh, cover. Yeah, yeah, that's excellent. And as far as the roto molding process, you would not do that yourself, no, uh, but there are people yeah. In I have a the Netherlands, or? half are driving for me, who did a lot of things by it, and they are also a little bit enthusiastic about cycling. Uh -huh. So I think they will manage together with me to get in the process. Yeah. Because if I have the drawings, then you need a mold. And if you have the mold, you can make your four first rotor molding thing. But likely the first is not good enough for what I want. So then the last process right. is starting. Perhaps you have a big bin of wasted materials, but then your knowledge grow, you change material, you change thickness, you change whatever yeah, needed. Yeah. And the, the energy balance, because where the mold is more heat than other places there, the growing of the plastic is faster and okay. thicker. Okay. So if needed, you can go in a very difficult process and say the top of the bill, perhaps over 10 years, uh, that's not where, is a robot who can turn it whatever you will and also the same process and electric heated, so with spirals on wow. the mold so that you can control. You can say, finally control yeah. where you want thick, yeah. thin, yeah. and such. Yeah, with, within reasonable reasons, yeah. but, but but that is the, the the big process over years, and I will first stop where I can have a reasonable fellow car body. Now, Leo, so interesting. So we'll be keeping our eyes on this because yeah. it seems like a really interesting project. Well, Leo, thank you uh, for taking the time to yeah. show the Layback Black Report uh, yeah. about all that Alift is doing right now. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you so much for sponsoring the Layback Black yeah. Report here at uh, yeah. Spetsy. So yeah, always welcome. a pleasure to work with you. Thank Keep you. Keep on the good work. Thank you. I like to see your videos. Well, yeah. we're going to make this one and you'll see it. Okay. So, thank Fine. you, Leo. Thank you. Mm -hmm.